but there is none like him. He is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down to the same, our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Let's get into the word of God. I want to talk to you today about fighting. No matter what you want to do for God, it's going to be a fight. There is nothing about glorifying God in the earth that is going to be easy, simple, no struggle. You know, even if you make up your mind you're going to do something for God, there's going to be a fight. And until you get that boldness and that tenacity that what I've been declared I'm going to do for God, no person has enough power to turn me around, you'll be wishy-washy. And you can't build on a moving rock. If we can put up just 1 Timothy 6 and 12, I just want to read a, the small piece of that says fight the good fight of faith. That's what I want to talk to you about, just fighting the good fight of faith. And uh, most people don't know what that means. Uh, they think that that means just keep confessing what you want or what you're trying to command God to do for you. And, um, and that's not what it's about. I want us to get to the place that we have a relationship with God that he can crush a lot of foolishness that the devil has ushered into the church for the sole purpose of keeping God's glory down. Most of us here, if we come from the black church, we know the Holy Ghost as a emotionalizer. He makes you shout, jump, you know, run, pass out. You know, I mean, we if you've been in any church, you know, that had a hammock, you know, at some point you call emotionalism a mighty move of God. And that's because, you know, a mighty move of God, you know, we don't have nothing to measure it by but the word of God. So once we feel like our emotions have been tickled, we feel like this has got to be God. But the truth of the matter is, there's people that can sing a song and make you cry. There's people that can sing a song, get you thinking about what you've been through, who hurt you, who said things, who lied on you, and next thing you know, you're boohooing. And uh, that's, that's not a mighty move of God, it's just emotions. And you can connect with some songs, some sermons, and uh, get emotional. But we got to make sure that we are open for God to show us the things we've done for years that is not relevant to his manifestation at all. Amen. Remember when the Holy Ghost made me run. The Holy Ghost came through here, just tore the place up. Child, we had church. Well, anything that God comes in and meddle in, you, it ain't going to be the same. No, like, I'm not, I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. You can't have God walk in here, shake you, rattle you, roll you, and all that stuff. And then you go back home to live with Jerome, and he, y'all ain't married. Right. People don't have no, nothing. They do what you want to do. Now, I'm not, don't, I'm not here to condemn nobody, all right? Because y'all ain't seen my marriage license. Y'all just took my word for it. Yeah. So I'm not here to condemn nobody, all right? But what I'm saying is an encounter with God brings about change. Most people have never had a real encounter with God, and that's why they can run off rhetoric and foolishness and just say anything, babble anything. I was sharing with my wife last night just so many things God has shared with me. I have a relationship with God. I'm not a theologian, just a relationship. Which means I, I get information because it's on the heart of God and not because, you know, I, I want to debate it with somebody. All right? Um, I, I can tell you this. It's offensive to God for y'all to walk around with a white Jesus in your body. Now, now listen to me now. I mean, it is what it is. If color don't matter, why lie about it? If it don't matter, if you got a white angel, and you need to rip it out. We got pictures on our wall and all this other stuff. And, you know, and, and the thing is that, you know, if you just had a relationship, can you imagine us just have fault day tonight, right? Ten years from now, Yolanda got a picture of another man talking about, wasn't he good to us? Come here, children. Look, look here. Look at what he did. And if somebody should say, well, who is that? Now, all y'all in it together talking about something. Yeah, Derek was all that in a bag of chips. Well, Derek didn't do nothing. So, so th th these are things that bother God, but people are so deep. Now, I'm about to share some other stuff. I'm going to tell you now, God don't have a problem with you flying private jets, but I think he does have a problem with you coming to the church getting money for the jet. I just believe that. I believe that. Because, you know, I'm reading how Jesus was turning over tables when people were in the house of God. 
collecting money and the church didn't benefit it. If, if I'm going to buy a private jet, can't nobody get in it but me, my clique, and my family. Well, y'all y'all need to get your own jet on your own. No, you can't come into my son. God told me he don't want me flying on a commercial. Kenneth Copeland said his demons on the, on the, on the jet. Now, since when money run away demons? If a demon is with you, commercial, can't, can it? He with you private. Now, I know some of y'all like Kenny. Y'all don't want to talk about that. But it is what it is. Do you know? Do you know? I don't have a demon hanging with me, no matter how I'm moving. If I'm walking, he ain't walking near me. If I'm driving, he ain't driving with me. If I'm flying, he ain't flying with me. But Kenneth said his anointing don't work on commercial, but it work private. I don't think God have a problem with it, because if, if God wanted us to be like that, I think Jesus would have had a black stallion, which was one of the fastest. Strongest horses of that day. He wouldn't have got a donkey. He was talking about, but it was a new donkey. He never would roll. <laughs> Please stop the foolishness. Ain't nobody in here gonna take a brand new, never ridden 1999 Honda Civic over a 2025 S5, 50, 60, whatever they're up to, Mercedes Benz. You ain't. Stop it. Tell me, so I want to prove I'm humble. You, you look, you're proving how much of a liar you are. Because every day you get next to that, that thing, and then, then you know you got the crank window. You got them dirt seats, them, then you got the. Mm, you know what that means? Ain't no power. You better grab that lever. And if you're heavy, come on now, you got to set that thing before you get in there. Because ain't no pulling up. Y'all know that. Y'all know that. Y'all know that if you're heavy, now you pull that lever. That seat go back to the trunk. It ain't coming back. You got to get out and pull that seat. So, so don't come telling me that there's there's something about I got to prove I'm humble. Now I'm not going to pretend to be poor to make you feel good. I'm not going to pretend. I had somebody uh, actually, and I felt bad about it. They said, you know, you shouldn't post things about food. You know, I haven't been posting as much, not because the person said anything. But they said, you know, there's people here that haven't eaten in days. And you post them. What, what, what the heck they doing on Facebook? <laughs> no, you ain't eating two days. I want to know why you on Facebook. Ain't nothing on Facebook to feed you. <laughs> Sitting up there licking the phone and stuff. No, you need to go. You should be rocking. So, so you know, I'm not about to sit there and not express the joy I have. Now, I, got, I got people that used to tell me, you know, your marriage can't be all that. But I, don't, I really don't give a John Brown what you think about my marriage. I honestly don't. And people say, well, you know, well, you know, when, when jokers post like this, there's they usually problems. I don't care what people think. People, The devil always trying to suppress the joy of the Lord. Right. Right. I don't want nobody in my business. So don't post nothing. Right. Don't try to make me like you. Right. And, and the, the thing is, the, the, the things that we are, are going through and we face with, you know, sometimes we need somebody, we need a relationship with God that we can be what God wants us to be, mm-hmm. not what your neighborhood has raised you to be. Come on. Some of y'all, your zip code, mm-hmm. your area code, that's who you are. Mm-hmm. And that got to change. Yeah. A relationship with God, he gets personal even to your wardrobe. Mm-hmm. No, I know, I know you got all the, the last 15 baby daddies you had. You had this, this outfit. Well, you know, God made me want to tell you, you know, this outfit is, is like horse poop to fly. You're attracting the wrong thing. I want to change your image. Now, you see, you can't, I ain't going to tell you that. Because you'll cuss me out and stuff. But if you get a relationship with God, that's totally different. And this is where God wants us, that we won't disrespect the Holy Spirit. Talking about something, he made me run, he made me shout. And the Holy Spirit said, no, that wasn't me. I wasn't trying to get you to run and shop. I was trying to tell you to stop shacking. I was trying to tell you, you know, that you should stop stealing in the grocery store. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I don't know if God's going to waive misdemeanor and felony like, like the United States do. Mm-hmm. You know, in some countries, if you steal, they'll chop your hand off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, here, depending on how much you steal, mm-hmm. will determine whether it's a misdemeanor or felony. Mm-hmm. I don't know if God's going to have a felony line. And a misbelief me not. He just may have a line for thieves. I don't know. So the Holy Spirit will check you on a lot of stuff. 
And this is why we need a relationship, because we fight in stuff that's irrelevant. We fight to get a feeling. We, we, you know, I, I, I always caught a lot of slack. I get preachers that would contact me asking for money one week, listen to something I say. They, they stop listening, though. They listen to something I say, then they're going to tell me how to correct what I say. Well, it, it looks like you should be listening to me, not me listening to you. I didn't contact you to pay, get no food and rent money. Listen to me. When I made the statement, you don't praise God to get nothing. People, because I, I was born and raised on that. I was born and raised on you praising God to get stuff. And I understand that it hurts some of y'all feelings. But the truth of the matter is, you cannot have a relationship with God that you're willing to say nice things about him because you want something from him. Right. Don't compliment me and you know you got a hidden agenda behind it. Right. Don't tell me nothing about what I look like and all this stuff, and you just, oh, Pat, I'm telling you, your word, you just a preaching. Ooh, fire yeah. fell from heaven. Yeah. I'm telling you, burn it up in heaven. Can I borrow $20 to yeah. you? Uh, no, no, no. And, and so now when I expose that, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Right, right. So that means before I come in with my praise, I got to already have something on my mind that he's already done. You know, you know, one of the things that builds a strong relationship is for someone that loves you doing things for you without you asking. Right. Yeah, it's true. No, I'm telling you, that, that, that really go a long way. You know, for you to have someone that pays attention enough to you, to your life, and all your struggles, that whatever you need, they, they, they got it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you come in praising God because he's a father like that, well, that's a different than I ain't happy with what you did. I'm going to praise you for what I want you to do. When I talk about lordship, you know, because I've been around churches where they say, you know, you ain't mad because you ain't wrote nothing down. How tall you want? Mm. What complexion you want? Mm. You want them with muscles? muscles. You want a thug? Okay. What you want? <laughs> and you write that stuff down. Must wear a hoodie. <gasps> Must see his drawers. No, no. Must have Tim's with no shoelaces. <laughs> and a nice car. Yeah. Wait, you write all that stuff down, and then you give it to God, and you say, hey, can you read? Well, get it here. Get and then when you understand what the Lord is, you know that, that that's not allowed with God. Mm -hmm. It's either he's Lord in your life, it's either God is your Father, and you're willing to hear and obey, or you're on your own page. Mm -hmm. So the fight is to please God, mm -hmm. not my flesh. Mm -hmm. When you start going to God to please your flesh, you don't even know that your flesh is an enemy against God. Your flesh is the only thing stopping you from being totally submitted to God. Your flesh. We don't, listen to me, we have never had problem with a sin that we didn't enjoy. Every sin that we have attached ourselves to and asked God to take it away, because if you don't take it, I ain't giving it up type sin. Our pet sin. And that matter wasn't painful. Ain't nobody sticking themselves with a needle talking about something I just can't stop. Right. No. No, I can stop this. Right. But it's when our flesh is pleased that a fight got to take place. Yeah. And now, you know, you know, I post something today and, uh, you know, God giving out more instructions than he is miracles. But they produce the same thing. Now, my question is, you know, if, if they produce the same thing, you ain't getting no miracle. How many twenty dollars you done gave? How many prayer lines you done got on? You ain't wasting my time with no prayer line, and you gonna go out here and do the same thing. You mean, nasty, cussing people out, and then think my prayer line is gonna gonna change that? No, your attitude, your character is preventing God from showing up in your life in a mighty way. My, my oil, and you know, and that oil is expensive now. My oil ain't gonna change you. You gotta change you. You just. You know, let me tell you something. You know what I'm saying? As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may not physically say nothing, but you know you know what's in your heart. That conversation you have in your heart, it, that's what really counts. No, no, come on, man, eat something, eat something, eat something. And then your heart, you say, well, I guess he's going to eat everything. Mm -hmm. Man, it ain't, it ain't but two of them. You figure he cut one in half. No, no, it's, it's either, either you have a heart that, that glorify God or you don't. And, and in that instance, we have to fight. First Timothy 6 and 12 said, fight the good fight of faith. And then lay hold on to eternal life. Simply anything that's eternal comes from God. 
fighting the good fight of faith. My flesh is going to prevent me from obeying God. I got to first off be able to clearly know what the fight is. I just can't keep babbling and I don't know clearly what the fight is. You must be open to know what is wrong on the inside of me that God wants to correct. For your marriage, for the upbringing of your children, for your financial stability. He said, well, you know, I, I would be, be rich, but I just can't stop buying sneakers. You need to know you've got a demon in you that keep you buying sneakers. You have to address it. Don't be sitting there talking about something. I guess I got to, I got to play the hand God dealt me. No. You, 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 you play in basketball with hockey rules. And you're not going to win. You're going to be disqualified. So I need to understand what's required of me, but I need to know where I'm coming up short. The last thing God showed me about myself, I'm talking about myself, I like church, I come back. The, the last thing God showed me about myself was I, I don't know how to mind my business. Now here's what you got to understand. That's deeper than you expressing what you feel and what you think in front of people. Because I felt like that was me minding my business. But on the inside, I felt bothered by people and, and their stupidity. And, and I'm telling you, God said to be plain as day. That's because you ain't minding your business. Right, right. The only reason what that preacher saying bother you, because you ain't that preacher ain't got your what? You tuned into this preacher. You stopped to hear him. And now you upset because he said something crazy about me. Well, you just need to mind your business. And then, then, see, here's the thing you gotta understand. You gotta know how the devil come in. Anything that disrupts your joy, your peace, and your happiness, the devil's trying to get access to something else. Don't no burglar break in to steal the lock off the door. No, they bust through the lock because something else on the inside they want to get. So you and then let me tell you something. So I begin to look at it, and I be, I'm telling you something, man. That thing set me free. Because you know, I would look at people saying things, posting things, people calling themselves a pastor, bishop, and stuff, and I know they're crazy. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like they're not right when it comes to who God is. People that's not called, wanting to preach, preachers that don't know nothing about God, just reading the story, preachers that can't read, got a reader, because they can't read. Yeah, that's that's common. Back in the day, it was common for a preacher to not know how to read, and uh, you know they would they would they would say read on, you know. If you read the wrong thing, he wouldn't know. <laughs> no, 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 and that thing would bother me, but I wasn't minding my business. People to be so wishy washy, you know. If you, if you want to find a, a, a people that's not faithfully committed, come to church. And that thing will bump, but I need to mind my business. See, the moment the Holy Ghost, which is your helper, he not your DJ. All right, come on. Y'all think the Holy Ghost is the one supposed to turn up. No, you know everybody got a song. Stop it. Some of y'all, you'll be sitting there, y'all won't be bothered. But you're just sitting there, you ate a few of them edibles. And, and, not, and then, and your music, come on. Don't have your edibles and your favorite drink. Dig this, oh Lord, child, you about to tell up something. And now, 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 here's what you, here's what you got to understand. Yep, that ain't the Holy Ghost. That ain't the Holy Ghost. No, 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 the Holy Ghost is never grabbing the mic saying, I want everybody up in here, raise those hands. That's not him. The Holy Ghost is the one that's saying, you know, you got to stop trying to have the last word in your marriage. Your masculinity has come from your years of independence, but you got to kill it. That's the Holy Ghost. Nobody want to talk to him. If you spend so many years surviving on your own, that you automatically, subconsciously don't fully trust the man you marry, because I know I, the only person I can really count on is me. And you got to kill that thing. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost pull you aside and say, listen here. I know you've been rocking by yourself for a long time, but yeah, they got to die if you want to build something. I don't trust them with all my money. My mama told me, don't tell them everything. Your mama was stupid. Yes, 
Yeah. Simply mean that she, she don't know no better, right? So, so you need to stop listening to her. You need to listen to me. You ain't even real. I don't even hear her arguing nowhere. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't even give me wind up music. No, no, the Holy Ghost said, no, I'm here to help you to really improve you. I need you to stop lying just to make yourself look good. I need you to stop making up stuff. I need you to just stay quiet. You ain't going to tell the truth. Just stay quiet. Yeah. I, I need you to be a real man. And being a real man is more than just paying bills. You, you, got, you got to know what it really means to take care of your family. Not just financially, but spiritually and emotionally. And then, and I mean, so, so the Holy Ghost is the one that lets you know what you need to be fighting. And then you really got to fight. Like, and then, now, what's the fight? First off, you don't need to warm up to nothing. You ever get that urge to lose weight and you feel like you got to warm up to it? No, just stop right there. Put the snicker bar down. Just stop right there and eat that snicker bar. Just throw it across the street. No, the devil, we tell you what the devil tell you. We're going to finish these snacks. Then we You know the devil because he said, then. You know he always talking to great. Then we going to start. No, no. You don't have to warm up. When you know God wants you to live in a different way, right then and there, it stops and the new me starts. And every time the old me try to show up, I correct it. Every thought that comes to your mind is not what your heart is. But what you're willing to ponder, what you're willing to keep on your mind, that's who you are. So, so the Holy Ghost tell you what you need to change, what you need to fight, every time the old me come up. Because the old me is, is my comfort. Scientists have said, uh, 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 I, I, I can't get the word right. What's the, the people that deal with your nerves, your brains, and the chemical? Neuro, neuro, who is it? Neurologists. Is that it? That don't sound right. Like yeah. Is neurologists? Oh, okay, all right, we're going to rock with that. If it's wrong, don't y'all come back at me. They say once your body, your body releases a chemical that once you break habits, your body now is like having a nicotine pill. It wants that same chemical, that same comfort. So you changing your character makes a discomfort in your flesh, which is God's enemy anyway. All right? So now you start to feel uncomfortable. Sometimes you can't even sleep because you didn't finish the fight the way you normally. Mm -hmm. Normally, I, I, I let this joker know stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put my, my phone and I got some choice cuss words mm -hmm. and some stuff I want to say. And I tell them if you don't like it, I, 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 but I didn't finish this way. I'm doing it God's way. Your body now says, where's, where's my nicotine? Yeah. And you feel a discomfort. Sometimes you can't even sleep. I remember when I was in the streets and uh, things didn't work out the way I wanted to, I would pace the floor all night. What I should have said, what I should have did, what I'm going to go back to do. You know, like you just, I just couldn't sleep. I'm not, I kid you not. Your body get used to you always uh, d d sabotaging joy in your life. Your body get used to that chemical and when you don't give it to it, it go withdraw, with, with, withdraw and you now start cutting up. Tell my son, if I don't let it out, it's going to bother me. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. The Holy Ghost is telling you, you need to fight. Stop thinking if it was a physical fight, most of y'all would be the, the top dog in there. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, you, could, you would be everything God would want if it was a physical fight. But now, the fight is in you. It ain't me. The fight is in you. Now, now you want to be a punk. Oh, you jump on me. If all you had to do was just beat little old me up. Y'all know I'm short and stuff, you know what I mean? My arms ain't as long, my reach ain't there. So y'all just come in, y'all just beat me down. But but now the fight is in you. You let Shawty go. No, listen to me. If you're gonna fight the good fight of faith, I need to know what I'm fighting. You you know. Chris Rock breasts his heart. He said he got friends that would tell him, Man, I ain't never cheated on my wife. Well, you don't get points for that. One thing about me, I'm going to take care of my kids. You don't get points for that. Right. That's what you're supposed to do. Right. They tell my son, one thing about me, I never I never woke up and put my white clothes on. You got to give me my props. What y'all going to say? Negro. Right. What were you doing going in that closet in the first place? Right. No, like, there's some. See, here's the thing. The devil make you think you're doing something special when all you've been doing is what you're supposed to. You're supposed to take care of your kids. Right. Come on. So 
I'm not saying, ain't nobody going to say that nice about me. What's the most to say? You, you the mother, you're supposed to take care of your child. Talk about something, y'all don't know the struggle I've seen. Nobody cares. Be a mom. Take care of your responsibility. And if you're a wife, take care of your house. Take care of your man. Now, can I tell you something? I, I've said this with my wife. I said this to my wife. There's very few church women that can really help wives take care of their house. Because everything ain't spiritual. No, it ain't. I mean, yeah, I mean, all they talk about is Jesus. And, all, and it, no, no, no. Somebody need to tell you what, what's your background, where you come from. And you say, well, you know, I've, I've been taking care of myself for the past 15 years. Immediately, you know what that comes with. That comes with a mindset. And, and all these times, you just got to pray, baby. What's the use of praying and you ain't going to change? Because right. you know what you're praying? you praying that somebody accepts you the way you are. Instead of praying to know what you need to change. Right. So your marriage is not happy because you don't have the right partner. You don't want to change. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was raised. That, well, you, well, you ain't raised by nobody now. You've grown. you got to make choices for yourself. My daddy wasn't there. So what that mean? You get to be reckless? Right. Right. My mama abandoned me. Okay. So, but, so now you mean to tell me that stopped you from learning now. You know, my wife shared with me, she said sometimes she gets frustrated because she's doing, she's doing, it seems like she's not doing right or she's not doing enough. I said, you never have to get frustrated when all you got to do is learn. Learn what you can. Do what you learn. Don't let the devil frustrate you because you're walking into a new arena. No, man. See, the fight is all about you knowing what's wrong on the inside of you. Once I know what's wrong on the inside of me, I now have to live out my purpose. When we talk about faith, we always think about pleasing our flesh. That perverts you living for God. Keep in mind, your flesh is an enemy against God. I said it this morning. The car you want to drive, your dream car, that's all flesh. The clothes you want to buy, all flesh. The house you want to live in, it's all flesh. Just think about it. You don't really, I got rooms in my house that we don't go in for months. That's the truth. That's the truth. I remember about, about a couple few months ago, I went into the media room. I don't even know what we was in there doing. And I said, man, you know, I ain't been in here. And God knows how long. My black room, I know it's dust in there. My grandson used to go in there, but he, we had to lock him out. But no, no, listen to me. The truth is, if you got a kitchen and a bathroom and a bedroom, man, come on now. You, you don't, you don't need, they got so many rooms, they just make up names. This is the nook. The what? This is the kitchen nook. This is the formal living room. This is the family room. This is the media room. This is not a bedroom. It is a study. What? No, listen to me. You don't need all that. If the devil gets you chasing that, you're going to be running after it for a long time. So I don't need to fight to get no house and car. I need to fight to represent God. Go to Mark 11, 22. When, I, when, I, when, when the Bible talk about faith, I don't need to talk about peace. I don't need to think about pleasing my flesh. I need to think about pleasing God. You know God said you can trust him. He said the things the world is seeking after. That right there is powerful to me. Everything the world is seeking after, he's our attitude. You know what the world wants? Power, money, nice. And I'm telling you, it's not for you to keep asking God for stuff. Trust God for what he want to add to you. Let me tell you something. Anything God adds to you come with peace, love, happiness. So people can have the same exact car, but they don't have that love and that peace in there. Amen. People are getting divorced, and they, everybody got a Rolls Royce. People committing suicide, and, they, and, they, and they're living in the mansion. You got, you got parents don't know what to do with their kids and because they, they just, you know, they, they live in their life. Their kids live in their life. When they find out that their kids dropped out of third grade, you know. <laughs> no, listen to me. There's a lot of, of homes that are, that are, you know, ambitious. They're entrepreneurs. And nobody's there to make a house a home. 
now, now they now they think Maria used to be married. You take care of the kids. Now Maria take care of the kids. You don't know what that means. Just leave it alone. And now, now they have more influence over your child than you. Now you see that, you get mad, now you want to enforce rules to prove I'm your mama, I'm your dad. But you, you haven't been. You paid bills, you provided a roof, and to your conclusion, you've done enough. But see, when you get to the place that when I start growing in God, I'm going to let God add this stuff to me. You know, God, God will send the right people into your life that give you everything you need. Let's get into this. Mark, Mark 11, 22. Right? We're going to read 22 to 24. And uh, what, what version is this? Can I get the New Living Translation? That's what I study. And I, I, I want you to catch this, man. I want you to catch I don't want you to think of your flesh. I want you to think of your spirit. What God wants you to do for him. Any area of your life right now, God wants you to glorify him. In. Are you hearing me? Amen. Now don't think about stuff. Your car can't glorify God because somebody got one better than you. You know, the man had all that money, multi-millionaire, and uh, he bought Elvis' whole plane and made a camper out of it. And, uh, well, you know, I mean, he got it all luxury, looking nice and all that stuff. Well, I mean, I mean, you're, I mean, my car big, but you ain't you ain't got no toilet in it. Right. My grandson, he didn't hit it in the toilet, you know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, don't chase materialism. Somebody got something bigger and better than yours. So that don't, just because you're in a group of people that got less than you don't mean God shining them. Right. And if you're not careful, you'll always look for the group that got less right. so that you can stand out. Right. Look at this. This is what it says. Then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. Faith means I believe in something. I have no physical evidence that it exists. You sit here today because you have faith. You ain't seen God. Stop blessing. Come on. He came to me. Moses couldn't even stand the sight of God. God showed Moses his hind part. And the Bible said it, it, the brightness was so intense that Moses came down with, with a tan. He went up looking like me, came down looking like my wife. That's just how powerful. So don't start talking about some God sat right there. Just. I remember this one lady, you know, the, the church is where I come up, soul on emotion. And I remember this lady said she was in morning prayer and she said she saw a foot go across the floor and it had a hole in it. She said it was Jesus. That stuff sounds like it's home. That sounds kind of good though, right? People like Jesus was here. Walk right through there. No, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. So I got to believe in God, a God I have no evidence that he's real. He just lives in my heart. Well, you know when God lives in your heart, you don't even have to know all the facts, but you'll know something ain't right. Like, you know, people say, yeah, well, this one here did this, that one. You say, hmm, I don't know. I don't want to get involved with this. Yeah, because, you know, when God lives in you, you don't need to know all the scriptures. All you got to do is be sensitive to the moving of God on the inside of you. The spirit that lives in you will sound off the law. You're, you're driving, you hear the siren, you don't know which way they're coming. You know, you hear some people just, just stop. Mm -hmm. Just stop. You know, and, and then my thing is, you got to keep moving because you, they could be behind you. You could be blocked. Once you lay eyes, then you know where to go. Right. You just can't stop in the middle of the road cussing other people out. You don't hear the siren? You don't know what's going on. Well, well, listen, you know I got to be on the alert. Something's, is somebody coming this way. Mm -hmm. And I got to make sure I'm not in, interfering. Well, that's how, the, that's how the Holy Ghost really do you. You be around certain people and you be like, yeah, we need to get away from these people. You say, how my auntie? Your, your auntie and your uncle. Your mama, your daddy, all your cousins. Don't even take a place. That, that's going to be the fight. When he tell you not to take a place, you say, what? I knew it was the devil. No, no. Don't take a place. Just get on, get on out. Go on home. See, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, look at this. I want you to cause think about you now, your character. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how dependent you are on your own nature to be saved. If you come out the streets, you ain't going to feel right leaving home without your little pistol. 
If you ain't got your gun, you got a pocket full of rocks and a sling. Talking about, I believe God for the spirit of David to be on me. But you don't feel right like that you ain't going to be saved. Mm -hmm. No, you can't let your neighborhood dictate the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. What you have to do to survive as a single woman, you can't do that. And survive with joy and peace and happy as a married woman. Because after you've been by yourself so long, you don't know what submission is. You the boss. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing worse than you being a boss and being demoted in your image to yourself. Mm -hmm. Talking about I got to glorify God. No, 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 no. No, because I, 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 listen, I know me. God going to send me somebody to love me. No, 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 he's not. You're going you're gonna to learn because you know no matter what happened, God don't change his Bible. Amen. I understand y'all got this woman power stuff. Y'all got this equal rights stuff. God says, I don't care what you call equal. I don't care how many times you march. I don't care what you protest. I'm not changing the Bible. And, and you got to submit to the Bible. Well, that, well and I'm just going to do what I want. Go ahead. You do it without God. So now when I, when I hear about faith, I don't need to deal with problems as far as my housing, my clothes. He's going to add that. Look at this. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, you can say to that characteristic that's been stuck in you. You can say to your upbringing. Your mama says somebody hit you, you hit them back. If you if they don't give you no respect, you don't give them. I, that mountain, may, may you be lifted up. May you be changed. May you respect your elders, whether they give you respect or not. And it will happen. Your character will change. My mother ain't never told me nothing about disrespecting no elderly person, no matter what they did. Right. Right. I remember, I, I don't know if I've shared this with you, I was with my grandmother sitting outside. Now, you got to understand, as a kid, you make everything a talk. We were poor, so every once in a while, the corner store would put out a box for us, and we would sit in the box, pull each other, mm -hmm. right, and um, or push, or, you know, and, and we take turns. Well, one day, God blessed me with a milk crate. Which you have to understand now is equivalent to a mountain bike to some people. Mm -hmm. We had a milk crate and we was playing with it. So we were sitting on the steps and the milk crate was right there in front of us. Me and my, my friend Curtis. And uh, I don't remember who else was. I remember Curtis. And the lady walked by, took our milk crate, and my grandmother was sitting there. And instead of her saying that my grandson milk crate, you know, she just she sat there and didn't say nothing. So you know I gotta say something. I say, you fat lady, you gonna take my milk crate? You gonna take my mountain bike? <laughs> my grandmother, shut your mouth. God will shun your days. I don't care what she took. You better watch your mouth. See, that's how, you know, nowadays, mm -hmm. they took your milk crate, the mama come out, you took my child bitch crate? You been beat? Oh, I, oh, you gonna give me my child milk crate? You see, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Once I know my upbringing or things that were okay with my mom and my daddy clashed with the will of God, I gotta get that out of my life. Right. That's, That's got to go. May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen, and have no doubt in your heart. <clears throat> now, this principle. Work whether you're a child of God or not to believe something and don't doubt it's gonna happen. You don't have to. You don't have that relationship with God. Believe you're a millionaire. Start learning and adapting and adjusting to be a millionaire before the money comes. You gotta be a millionaire before the money comes. You hear me? It's gonna happen whether you come to church or not. But Jesus is now saying that don't take that principle. To please your flesh. You know, they, I, I really believe that that principle. That you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe. You got to see yourself somewhere that you're not. And you got to live like that. You know, I, I, I was telling my wife, I've been fortunate enough to be, be in millionaires' homes. And uh, I see their garage. All of them got clean garages. I don't. So I got to straighten out my garage. And there's so much to be done around the house. And so when when God was telling me about that, I said, you know, God, that's a lot of work. A lot of time will be required. And this was the response. 
It's easy you're going to be a multi-millionaire, you know. Because this house, like this garage, yeah, yeah, you can. Now, the de the technical def definition of a multi-millionaire is just being worth more than $2 million. But that's a cheap shot because you've been in real estate for a little while, so you can't really use that for me. For me, a multi-millionaire is you got millions coming in from multiple sources, you got millions saved, and your income is in the millions. No, it's not, it's not I, I got assets that you got to sell everything you own to be worth a million dollars. To be, no, to me, that's not a millionaire. And you can take whatever definition that suits you and run with it. Because the truth matter, depending on what neighborhood you're in, you get one house, and you, you can, you're a millionaire. That's just a fact. The house value just jump. I mean, that, I don't, you know, I've talked to people that do stocks, and they say, well, stocks just like real estate. Well, that's cool. I, I just I just prefer real estate. But here, here's what you got to understand. That money I can get, whether I love God or not, I love God. He's the one that has ushered me to this place, but the principles he exposed me to, it never goes beyond me doing it for his glory. Which means, because if, it, if his glory is on the back burner, you'll buy them shoes to please your flesh before you take that money to glorify God. You, you'll be so caught up in your flesh looking a certain way, you, you'll take God's money to do it. See? Oh, let me, let me. But you must really believe and it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Don't think about your flesh. Think about your spirit. God will add the mother stuff. We take this scripture, when we hear this, we think about cars, how, what you can do. But now your character got to be right. Yes. That's where you need to be using your faith fight. Both this materialism, God said he'll add it. Trust him. You got to believe he's going to take care of you. Amen. You ain't got to work like that no more than my grandchildren got to worry about whether or not I'm working on a legacy for them. They, they, my grandson ain't stopping that foolishness. Mm -hmm. No, he got he got other things to tend to. Mm -hmm. That you got things that tend, you got to trust God. He's a better father, a better mother than you ever be. Yeah. Go, go twenty four. Look at this. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. You can be made anew right now. That was, that was like that was supposed to be like a reaction type statement. The value was up. The words for power. Y'all was supposed to say amen. You know, something whistle, pop your finger, that's a key. No, 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 just think about it. If you believe, if you pray for anything, Father, I want to be a good husband. I want to be changed. I want to be sensitive that I don't take a, abuse. I'm not abusive to my wife. Not, not so much physically, but emotionally. And I, I don't care that she's bankrupt in her emotions. Teach me God. God said, if you pray that to me, if you ask me for it, believe that you're a new man, a new husband, a new wife, a better mother, a person with wisdom. He said, you will receive it. It will be yours. All you got to do now is believe I'm not what I was. Ain't no warm up. No, no, listen to me. And when they say the Holy Ghost don't know jokes, that's a true statement. Don't, don't play around. Can I tell you something else? I want, I want you to get this. When it comes to God's anointed, when God put people in your life, because you know, people need a microphone to be anointed. Amen. You know, once you do what God changed to do, it got anointing on. Because now it's up to God to bring it to pass. If any, listen, I don't care if your dog, when you go home, your dog starts talking to you, Whatever that dog tell you, if it comes from God, that dog's anointed. Mm -hmm. Once you do what the dog said, watch God show up. He can't lie. When you have anointed people in your life, be careful that you don't abuse yeah. that person. Tell me somebody I was just joking. You, if the person is fat, you can't call them fat. You know it's offensive. Right. You can say, well, you, that's, you call people fat, but I don't, I'm not, I don't call people fat. I'm talking, I'm preaching, I'm teaching. I'm talking about the discipline of flesh. All right? So if you if you overweight 
and you trying to make people feel bad that had a baby, I come for you. Because that extra burger is a sin too. No, come on now. You'll, you'll never walk out with a doggy bag. You walk out with a whole nother order. Come on, someone had this now. Let me tell you what I'm going to get to go. No, you can't do that. So you can't, when God has anointed people in your life, you can't be making fun of them. You can't be making short jokes, fat jokes, bald head jokes. No, you don't know some kids made fun of Elijah. The Bible said God sent the sheep at, ate the children. God loves children. You heard what God said. God, God said, Catholic Church, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't do that. It would be better for you to put a rope around your neck and jump into the sea than to hump those little boys. I'm telling you now. And he ain't alive. He ain't alive. Y'all ain't, well, I didn't know y'all was Catholic. Jeez. Y'all got all. If you pray for them, if you ask God to help you with the change, it's coming. It's coming. And, and i got to believe that's who I am. And now that's my faith fight. Not a car, not a house, not clothes, not diamonds. My faith fight is to be the new me. Amen. The husband that God called me to be. The submissive wife. Now I may be a judge, I may be a senator, I may be the vice president, but at the same time, when it comes to my marriage, i got to honor God. I, I have secret service to shoot you. No. That no, no matter who you are, you if, if you want to glorify God. Right. Go to go to First John five and fourteen. First John five and fourteen. I want you to understand the devil had us focus on our flesh so long. We thought you can get this stuff. I'm telling you, the principles work. Right now, you can make up your mind. You're a millionaire. You believe it. Act like it. Now, this, here's, here's what I love about God. God helped you and usher you into the right character and the right demeanor right. to bring you there. Right. That you will be a millionaire. When the money show up, you ain't surprised. Right. I've been living here for years, months, weeks. Look at this, look at this. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. When we go to, go to verse go to verse 15, so I can go ahead and, and close this, this verse out. And since we know he hears us, when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Amen. Everybody turn this scripture into materialism. Pleasing our flesh. What kind of car you got to drive to be kind to of people? Any. It don't matter. Right. Cars don't glorify God. To be, to be on the lookout. To buy somebody a coffee, a donut, a bagel, or something. Well, well, how big your house got to be? I told y'all, I tell people all the time, listen here. In-ground fools don't, now listen to what I'm saying now. In-ground fools don't have more value than above-ground fools. I'm talking about the joy, the peace, the happiness, the fun. The company make all the difference. No matter where that pool, you got to climb up the steps to get in the pool. Or you step down, step in the pool. I'm telling you, the value is not the term. Now, don't let the world tell you if you got an in-ground pool, you somebody. Right, right, right. You come get in the pool, your wife jump out. Your kids don't want to get in there. The only people we don't like around the pool when we in the pool is 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 uh, Ace. <laughs> Ace just holler all the time. You trying? You trying? Are you trying? Are you doing that? Hey, shut up, leave. <laughs> no, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. It don't matter how much money you got in your account. You know you still you still can be nice to people, kind. Give the love on the road. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. Just give out love when you drive. If you get that mindset, you don't mind letting people get in front of you. I, I this is what I be saying. Come on, there's room for everybody, and let you in ain't gonna make me no later. Because if I left on time, I'm good. How many, how many times have you seen a car drive like a, uh, an idiot and just just two, three minutes later, he sit right next to you? Man, ain't nothing like you. I ain't going to lie to you. I, when, I, when I hit that gas and I go around somebody that's driving slow, 
I don't want to get caught by no light because it makes me look stupid. And they right, they sitting right behind me. All that for nothing. No, 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 listen to me, listen to me. Give out love on the road. It don't matter whether you drive a Chevy or a Mercedes. Give out love. You and listen, if you if once you know this is what God wants you to be, because the devil is ruling and reigning. We need love out here. You need, let me tell you something. I know what it is to want to be loved. Yeah, I, you, can't, you can't make me delusional. I know I want to be loved. I don't ever want to be without someone loving me. Yeah. Yeah. No, man, you big Superman. Now, I ain't going to be suicidal now. I'm telling you that right now because, you know I, mean? I don't want nobody talking about something, you know, you're on the left and you kill yourself. No, she killed me before she left. I make sure the story's out right. No, I'm not suicidal. But I know what I want. I know what I desire. All right? You, God is saying, when you, when you go back to verse 14, man, it's powerful. You, you can be whatever God demands on your life. He said, we are confident, meaning we don't doubt, we're not shaky on this. We, we are arrogantly believing what God has said. We confident that he hears us whenever we ask anything that pleases him. Father, teach me how to forgive. You know, there's things that go on. You got to learn how to forgive instantly. Not no warm up. Because don't take the devil off. Hop, listen to me. Leave your car unlocked for five minutes in front of a car thief. You know, it, it, it ain't, he ain't got to warm up. He going to do what he got to do. He going to do what he got to do. The next thing you know, you're hollering down the street. Give me my car. Don't let that devil have five minutes with the car running, sitting in your drive. Don't let him have it now. Amen. Learn how to forgive instantly. Learn, there's a, there are some people in your life you got to be with every day. I need you to focus on all the love they give, the security they give, and, and the concern they give. So if they ever slip up, you're ready to forgive. I got, I got forgiveness on that. No, the devil ain't coming in here because, you know, I, I don't have forgiveness ready to spit out. And you ain't got to be, not, listen, don't be crazy. Don't be going up to your bed. I forgive you for being stupid. No, no. Just go act like you act like nothing. Ain't nothing more but makes make that devil mad than you act like nothing ever happened. Man, I'm telling you, if you ask God to give it to you, now you can't you can't get no proof from people. Because your girlfriend gonna tell you what, what to do. She ain't got no man. You crazy enough to listen to her. You know you're crazy when you start talking about your man to a woman with no man. So, so God said, when you ask me, I'm going to give it to you. It pleases me for you to give something that's going to make your house glorify me. Your marriage glorify me. I don't care, I don't care what my kids say about me. They'll never be able to say, you know one thing, you, know, you don't want no husband like my dad. No. No, I, I don't, I don't, listen to me. I, I'm an example. Anything that's going to help you be a greater example, God said, I'll give it to you. I, I hear you. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I ain't going to lie to you. There's, there's no rest if I can't provide. Mm -hmm. There's no rest if I can't provide. That's who I am. You know, I was talking to a man just yesterday. I said, fathers don't get fired. We may get laid off. But we don't get fired over our behavior. We don't get fired because we show up late. We don't get fired because we talk bad. We don't get fired. We don't get fired. I don't care what they say to us. No matter what they listen to me. <clears throat> God said I can give it to you. Whatever you need to be. That please me, ask me. See, if you want God to give you something, have you ever 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 well, well I know it ain't in ain't in this church. You ever had your child come to me and say, listen, I'm just sitting in my room doing nothing. I want to know what, what, what you got planned so I can help you out. You want me to do the dishes for you or anything? You want me to you know, rub, wipe down the cabinets? The kids don't do that. They don't. They don't. They don't. Can you imagine going to God and saying, listen, I know my attitude is steady. The Holy Ghost told, showed me. I want, you to, I want you to give me a new, new mindset. I want to stop being so quick to just say something. God said, I'll give it to you instantly. Last verse, Mark 9, 23. 
9.23. Jesus made this plan. If you will believe, all things will be possible to you. The word possible comes from a Greek word called dunata. D-U-N-N-A-T-A. Dunata. Look, look, look now. And it expressed the idea of your ability, your power, one who's able and capable, one who's competent. Now, here, now here's the thing. Because here God is telling you, don't ask me to do something for you that goes against nature, goes against, um, you know, your ability. Talk about something. I, I, I believe I can fly. Go ahead, jump. You gonna learn. You gonna learn. You know how tall the building is. You gonna learn real quick. That was just a song. So God is saying, don't go crazy with this. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. You better hear me on this. You know, if you have feelings for someone, y'all have a relationship. You can speak life into that. You know, most married couples don't speak life. They just hope the feeling come. They hope the emotions stay. No, speak life. Speak life. And, and because that's how you build your belief in something. Your persuasion. The brainwashing. Your mouth. Start speaking some stuff. I'm in love with my wife. I'm sexually attracted to my husband. I'm sexually attracted to my wife. I want to serve my wife. I want to speak. I bring joy to my spouse. Speak those things into your life. Well, God said, I help you do that. Stop just letting your marriage take a course and you hope it ends up in a good place. No. Become the captain of that ship. What, what do you mean, if I can? Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believes. Listen, stop thinking that means I'm going to get what I want for my flesh. God said, I need you to believe you knew. See, the problem is the new may not line up with your flesh and what it wants. You say, yeah, I, I want to be new, but I don't want to give this up. Well, if he's telling you to be new, mm -hmm. I don't think he's going to compromise. Right. That's true. Uh, you know, listen to me. Let me tell you something. There's things the devil attacked that, you know, I love everybody. Don't nobody get crazy. From the very beginning, there are things God has established to call that he calls the family. It makes up a home. And it's been under attack since the beginning of time. Now, I'm going to share something with you that, I, you know, I'm sure somebody else has said, but I have read it out. Y'all know what the rainbow represents. The rainbow represents God saying his promise that I would never destroy mankind again with the flood. Right? Because he flooded the earth. Mm -hmm. After, you know, Noah landed, he gave the rainbow. And that was supposed to mean I will not destroy it. Now, the LGBT community has the rainbow. It's a direct attack to say, yes, we will destroy mankind. Because two women, two men can't produce. I mean, if, if babies ain't being born, I'm, well, I, I'm, I, I mean, don't get crazy. If every woman decides they want a woman, every man decides they want a man, <clears throat> where, where does that lead? The rainbow. A lot. So there are things now that you have to accept that I, I need to make sure I'm not gullible. That I'm a part of the devil's plan. We respect and we love everybody. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm going to call a spade a spade. Right. Amen. Don't you ever ask me to change the word to be your friend. Right. Amen. Don't you ever ask me to change the word because we want to get along. Right. No, that's not right. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't. So, 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 so. Jesus said, whatever you ask him, whatever is wrong. Because first of all, you go right back to what I said in the beginning. If you don't know what's wrong, you don't even know what to pray for. Right. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost, make me aware of what's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Not only will it make your way in your character, but in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. If you're always broke, there's something you need to, you need to do something about that. There are things, now wisdom helped me in my business. She does. All right? And I always consult her. And I'm always talking. What should I do? Where should I go? What should I be implementing? I just started talking to my kids about passive income. You know, you've got to be able to make something and do nothing for that money to come in. That, that's, I'm, I'm telling you now. 
If you got to physically work for every dollar that comes into your hand, trouble is up the road. I ain't thinking of getting that quiet. I thought you were going to try to act like you had something working, but go ahead. If every dollar you get, all right, now some people, they, they, you know, like I was in past that work state, he getting pensions and, and security and all this other stuff. But, you know, so that, you know, that's totally different. But I'm talking about you, you that's young enough now that you, you still got to physically work to get that money. <clears throat> you know, the pensions ain't what they used to be. No. You remember, I remember a pension, they would take your last year's salary and base your pension pay off that. That don't happen no more. That don't happen no more. They used to have pensions where you had the health insurance too. They don't have that no more. So you, you got to now, I talk to wisdom, and you got to now talk to God about some things about that's wrong in your life. It, it's just you and God. Because if your breath stinks, you want somebody to take it. I'm telling you, I told my wife the other day, I had somebody sit in the front seat. Boy, that man breath smells so bad. I almost had me. I be swerving. I'm going to no. go off the road. No, you need somebody that love you enough that they'd rather have you right and mad at them. And when they offer you that mint and you turn it down and say, uh-uh, no, uh -uh. You need to take this. Don't get stupid. I know you ain't saying my breath stank because your breath be stinking too. No, it's not about whether or not my breath be stinking too. I just saw a fly fall dead. You spoke, that fly went past your breath and here he is laying on the ground. Wow. Take the mint. <laughs> Take a minute. No, because because listen to me. The more you open to learn, the faster you will grow. Father, thank you for your children that have come to this place to get more of you. I pray, God, the word has fallen on good ground and that it bring forth fruit in its season. And absolutely no weapon formed against your plan for our life will prosper, especially the, the, the old me, the old character. Father, I ask that you have the Holy Spirit to expose me to me and you help me to make the changes required to glorify your name. Do it. I'll give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.